I like programming, automating and scripting in games. So I did so on a Minecraft video in which I played Skyblock and I got a very reasonable amount of comments asking me to do the same on Hypixel Skyblock. There were also Linux users doing, you know, Linux user things. And just like the time I got reminded that gluten-free bread is not actually free, don't let the name misguide you because Hypixel Skyblock has almost nothing to do with Skyblock. It's just an MMORPG. I tried mods and I realized I don't really like them so I'm gonna be doing vanilla. On the programming side I'm gonna make my own forge mod and use Baritone. Psych! I'm just gonna use Minescript again. It's an internal library that lets me control my character and get in-game data. Basically it's what connects my code to the game. So I got my Minecraft account, a Skyblock guide that will assist me throughout the journey, set up Minescript and found a no-copyright song. My first mission is to unlock the bazaar, which I unlock at Skyblock level 7. And just like in the Grand Exchange which it plagiarized, you can pretty much buy and sell every item and it's a big part of the economy. I spent a solid 7 seconds on the island and now it was time to leave. Collecting a bunch of one item levels up your item collection and gives you XP. The plan now is to do that for a lot of different items so I can level up pretty fast. I did a bunch of wheat and then it was time to move on to the barn. Here I did the same with some vegetables and animals for about 20 minutes. Bruh, this guy just killed my cow. Then I mined a bunch of sand and it was time to move on to the most dreadful area. I had to mine an unreasonable amount of ores with a very slow pickaxe all while getting ran down by a bunch of roadmen which seemed to hit me for what I could only assume was me taking away their embed permissions on discord. What I do? So after turning some zombies into hashtags and sliming some slimes I finally finished. Sorry. This traumatic experience got my villain arc started so I whipped out the professional diagram illustration app and I started skimming the mining script all the while my skyblock guide was flexing his designer cheats on me. There's gonna be a lot more on the mining script later. This was to unlock the dwarven mines which is the main mining area of the game. People come here to farm these glacier walkers for easy XP since they can be one shot with a pickaxe. I realized that this was too much minecraft and not enough programming so I made a trigger bot for glacier walkers. Bop bop bar to the anti cheat. I'll talk about why it's useless later. I went through the mine script docs, I pulled up atom and then I made it so that every time there was an entity in my hit range it would simply left click. It worked perfectly until... STOP f***ing STEALING MY SHIT! What is wrong with these people? Not only were the higher level players dashing to the glaciate walkers faster than a Romanian to a dropped wallet, but the server was also lagging which resulted in me dying a bunch of times so I decided it was time to go next. And now I started having fun cause I got a bunch of wheat, I sold it to the NPC so that I could buy a really nice axe that would start one shotting trees. So I did that for at least an hour, not because it benefited me but it was just very fun and I didn't really want to stop. Also it was leveling up my collections incredibly fast. Then the shaders kicked in and I felt like I was in a Vinland Saga episode. I went for so long that I got skyblock level 8 and now it was time to make some money with the bazaar. People get loot from dungeons in this game and they insta sell it to the bazaar when they're finished. People sell some books like infinite quiver for one coin to get rid of them really fast because that's the insta sell price. This means I can buy the lowest level version of the book for one coin and then I can process it into the highest level and sell it for 200k. The upside is that it's a lot of easy money with pretty much no requirements. The downside is that it takes a lot of clicks and time. And I'm already being sued by my wrists for 8 years of abuse playing also in league. I mean just look at how they crash. Back. So I'm gonna automate it. Don't try to script on the server because if you don't know what you're doing you're probably just gonna get banned. So I'm gonna need to know where my inventory slots are on the screen again. And the last time I did this I did it in a very quick and dirty way just so that it would work. A lot of people got triggered that I didn't use an offset and started bitching in the comments. Those are the same people that would ego over programming and not let people have fun. So just for those people I have something special. Domain expansion. Turbo shit code. I made a script which would record my screen positions every time I press space and then I took every single inventory position manually. Then I had to reuse the last few slots so I could have just written logic for it but instead I made different variables and retook the positions again. Not once but three times. Then I added some cycling logic and macro inputs. After that we put down a bunch of hoppers that go into chests and we built a hut around it to make it look as suspicious as possible. This is how it runs and it made us enough money to be able to start building a farm. So we cleared the plot and made the default wheat farm. It was quite chill to farm at 7am while watching the wire on my second monitor. I switched to a sugarcane farm and now it was time to automate everything. Farming is very straightforward so I made a script that would work on pretty much every farm. All I need to do is move right forward, left forward and repeat. This means that I only need two blocks, the left and the right border. Now I just need to move between these two blocks but I can't land on the same exact position every single time. So I'm gonna add a bit of spatial randomization as well. Then I just tell it how many times to repeat and how many blocks to walk forward each time. So I made a cycle out of it and in 
the case of sugarcane, I also need to walk back until my back touches the wall, so I implemented that as well. I took some measurements of the farm, plugged it into the script, and now it looks completely human from both my perspective and from the servers. When I logged in the next day, I got the authentic YouTuber experience, and I noticed that my Skyblog guide cleared out six entire plots and built a whole wheat farm for me, which would have taken me at least a few hours. He also gave me some instructions and a list of items I should get and how to do it most efficiently. And then I left the book script running in the background while I attended some very important business, and when I came back, I had plenty of money to get all the farming gear. Let me just fix this one water block real quick. What? No, 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 no. So the farm was operational. I made a new script for this massive farm, which worked on the generally same principles, but was different. And I'm not going to be showing that one because I used it for over 200 hours and was my main money maker and it worked a little bit too well. I just know that if I show it, people are going to abuse it. I also did a bunch of books in the background, so I would pretty much get double the money. And then I started getting a whole lot of money, which was going to set me up for future fishing and mining. Uh, no. So you remember in the beginning when I was losing my mind with mining? Yeah, ever since then I wanted to make a mining boat, but I knew it would take a lot of time. So I wanted to finish the farming script before I started working on that so I could get money in the background. So mine script has two ways to look at blocks. You either use the look at function where the player camera just blinks straight at the block. This doesn't really move, it just teleports it directly on it. This would obviously get flagged and it's very suspicious. So I would need to write a custom method to make one of these things work smoothly rather than just teleporting onto the position. This is also why I like mine script because it gives me the low level data and I need to come up with the creative solutions that make stuff work rather than just having a built-in function that does everything for me. This is how it currently looks like when I try to look between two blocks, it just blinks in the middle of the other block. This is obviously way too robotic. Originally I thought I could just project a block that is way further away between where the player is looking and the block that I'm currently looking at and then just look at the next block adjacent to that one that is projected far away. That way even though the distance would be pretty big between the blocks they would be so far away that my camera rotation would be very small. Then I realized that's just overcomplicating it for no reason. So I tried to iterate through block float positions but that also didn't really work. So then I ended up having to use the player camera position feature where I had to rotate the camera orientation which involved so much more complex math and I didn't really want to do it but nothing else was working so here we are. I've heard some people say, oh, ChatGPT could easily do this, this isn't real programming, so I put it to the test and I wanted to see how it would work out. After explaining in great detail what I want, it gave me this. <sighs> Thank you, ChatGPT. And then after trying to get it to fix itself for half an hour, I got this. <sighs> Thank you, ChatGPT. To be fair, you'd probably use something that's made for this, like warp, but you get the point. Eventually, I made it myself, I got it working and added some curvature as well. Later on, I changed the speed and the curvature based on the distance traveled, so it would look more human. Because obviously, there's no reason to curve small movements too much, because that's not what people do. But the larger ones make more sense that way. Then I created one that would scan for blocks around me and I made it look for iron blocks. So that way I could test how it would look in a more realistic scenario. But let's not forget our priorities. I added a cursor dance to it first. And then I made it look smoother and more human and in the eyes of the server this looks completely legit. One thing I didn't like is how it was selecting blocks because it would kind of only move left to right and top down and it would look like this sometimes when normal humans look like this and they kind of clump blocks together and they have a bit of a different logic. I was sick of working on this all day so the only reason you're seeing me on YouTube and not on the news is because I just finished up the humanization with Warp. Speaking of Warp, it's the only sponsor I actually use myself and would give a personal recommendation for. It's an agentic development environment used for programming at all levels. It works directly with files and repositories and is much more sophisticated than something like Claude or ChatGPT. It's not even comparable and it can easily help with large complex projects. Unlike Simple LLM's work was designed for engineers of all skill levels including over 600,000 senior engineers that work at Fortune 500 companies, some of which I know personally. It's not a vibe coding tool, it's an entire platform built at the right level in the stack to make your work as efficient and convenient as possible so you can spend your time on things that actually matter. With a 71% on SWE Bench verified and the number one rank on Terminal bench it's incredibly powerful. I could tell you all about the rules and autonomy control, multi-agent capability, terminal workflow efficiency, performance and advanced prompt understanding but at the end of the day I'd recommend just trying it yourself since you can use their free plan with no strings attached and decide if you like it since I'm quite certain that most of you will really enjoy it. If you do end up going pro like I did you can use code crane 25 for a limited time to get a 70% off of the pro plan and you can also use the links in the description. I don't know it's cool I like it I use it maybe you'll like it too. I didn't really end up doing a whole lot of mining but 
but this was still very useful because it's just a smooth looking script. So basically I can use it whenever I need to move my camera around. So I can also use it for fishing to kill the sea creatures and also for Slayer if I feel like automating Slayer. Before we get into fishing, let me talk about the anti-cheat real quick. A lot of ignorant people have been telling me that if I try this on Hypixel I'm gonna get banned. In fact, that was about 80% of my comments when it came to Hypixel. But the reason why this doesn't really work like that is because Minecraft has a server-side anti-cheat. This means that it has no way of knowing what's happening on my PC, it can see my processes, if I'm injecting into the game, what mods I'm using. It only gets the information that my client sends to the server itself and even that information is very limited because it can only be polled at a 50 millisecond rate. Basically Minecraft servers are limited to 20 ticks per second meaning that they only get data 20 times per second. So when you're dealing with user input where sometimes you need to see data down to the single millisecond or even nanosecond, this is just, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> so they address the macroing situation very similarly to RuneScape where they flag accounts that have some sort of suspicious activity. This could mean either suspicious timings, maybe your character turns 90 degrees instantly a bit too many times, or you just do one activity for 400 hours straight. And then once your account has been flagged, the mods manually review it, which means that they might spectate you or they might macro check you. A macro check is when they teleport you around or move your camera orientation or open an interface on your screen, basically something to interrupt the action that you're doing. And if it's a bot, it might break and then it's gonna give away the fact that you're macroing but if you're playing manually you would just handle it how a human would so that's pretty much the only prevention system they have which took me a total 10 minutes to bypass it had a predictable pattern of where the character was supposed to move and where it needed to look at and if it changed even slightly it would immediately alert me with a bell notification this means that if they try to mess with my player in any way, I would know. And because I was doing other stuff on my PC, I would just hear it, tap back in and fix it. I haven't been macro checked so far in over 200 hours of using it. The next thing that I wanted to automate was fishing, but before that I wanted to give forging a try, because I like chopping down trees earlier. I did not enjoy it at all, so I quit in about half an hour. And so began the fishing arc. While I was working on the mining code, the farming script got me about 40 mil, which was enough to start fishing. So for fishing, you need to throw out your rod, you wait until a question mark appears, when it gets close, it will turn into an exclamation mark and then you right click to pull it. Sometimes you get a fish or other items and then sometimes you get a sea creature. People usually focus on killing the sea creature because doing so gives you a lot more XP than fishing normally. Those question and exclamation marks are actually just name tags put on top of armor stands which are entities so I can just loop through the entities and find the armor stands. So literally all it took to make the basic module is just wait for question mark, wait for it to turn to exclamation mark and then pull. Then I made it automatically pull, I added a counter and I went to the next area in an attempt to dodge sea creatures. This way they wouldn't get pulled into me, my rod wouldn't get stuck on them and hopefully the players below me would also kill them so I could get some XP. After a bunch of extra farming I finally made 40 mil and I got my new weapon. It's called a glacial sight, it's basically a mage weapon, it shoots out these ice balls and then they explode on impact as well. It does a lot of damage and I think it's really cool. Haha, <laughs> good thing no one told me about experiments because now I don't have the enchantment level to use ultimate wise. And I reached my daily limit on the experiments. If I speak I am in, in big trouble. The problem was that they still hit me and my rod was getting stuck on them, so I had to find a way to actually deal with the sea creatures. There was a fishing safe spot that somebody showed me, but since I already made the smooth looking script for the mining, I might as well use it. I can just make it track entities instead of blocks and use the existing logic. So I modified the mining script and I started looking. So I moid it. So I meant. So I found the pig and slapped the name tag on him and now he's Bobber. He's gonna be our test subject. I modified my mining script to look for him throughout the world so I could see if I can get entity positions. Once I had those positions, I just used my aiming script to look at the pig's position and after a lot of unnecessary debugging and issues, it started working. And just like Shane Dawson's cat, Bobber became a victim of animal abuse. <laughs> The movements were very choppy, inaccurate, and the logic just wasn't really working, so I had to change it. After a few changes, I decided to go for the ultimate tracking challenge and try to track a bat with my crosshair. Now I can't wait for some re Now I can't wait for some genius to show up in the comments and tell me that my script is actually bad because I'm not hitting any of the snowballs. I think it should be pretty clear that the purpose is me following the bat with my crosshair and not actually hitting the snowballs. After a lot of experimenting and magical numbers, to my surprise it actually looked very human towards the end. And this has brought me the greatest of joy. But currently I'm only sorting them after the name Bobber. On Hypixel they're gonna have a unique entity ID, so I need to somehow get that UUID. 
There's a few ways to do this. One would be adding an event listener that looks for entity spawns and then limiting the area to a 5x5 five five area of where my character is looking. So that way it doesn't get every entity in the world, it only gets those that spawn next to my fishing rod. Then when I confirm that it's spawned, I can use the get targeted entity to get data on the entity itself and then track it with my aiming script. In the beginning this looked really bad but over time I actually made it look really good and I ended up fishing for at least 10 hours and I got my fishing to level 22 without even using good methods. So overall I'd say it was quite a success. First it waits for an exclamation mark and then it pulls the rod. Right as it pulls it scans for the entity spawns in that close area to see if any sea creature spawned. If it did spawn it uses the ID to look for the entity from now on and if the cursor is currently on it then it tries to kill it and if it's not it's gonna use the mining script to try to track it. So I wanted this potion that would increase my fishing speed. Sadly it wasn't on the bazaar or auction house so I had to get it from the NPC and so I started speedwalking to his area under protest. Gun to your head, name me four anime that I talked about in this video. Uh, bleach? I was annoyed that I had to go all the way over there so I bought them like there's no tomorrow and then we realized that my skyblock guide forgot to mention that I should get a god potion which gives me a lot of buffs and a global 20% XP boost. <sighs> I regret to inform you that the skyblock guide is no longer among us. Then I bought a bunch of overpriced autopet rules to get more XP and I went to the super secret fishing spot. Do not leak the super secret fishing spot. The reason this is a good spot is because you flip the sea creatures behind you into another pool. So not only do they not attack you and you don't have to clear them, but there's a bunch of people below that will kill them for you and you get the XP. Ah, but why is this guy so cringe trying to knock me down from the tree? I hope he gets turned into a pig and people throw snowballs at him. Oh well, let me go back to the secret fishing spot. Who leaked the super secret fishing spot? For the next few days I did a bunch of non-Minecraft stuff and I had the farming script running in the background. There was also the hedgehog incident where I farmed 500 pests to get the pet because I didn't know I could just buy it from the auction house for 3 million. Those pests took <laughs> a very long amount of time to get and the money has no value to me. So after playing for a week I had the best farming setup in the game. These are my pets and I also have 4 pet rules. And these are my skills with the most notable being 45 farming. So far my net worth is about 1.5 billion right now after playing for about a week. I could easily get much more than that and I could max out all of my skills very quickly but I don't really see the point in that. I just wanted to make some cool little scripts and prototypes and show you guys. My bank is capped out and I have 250 mil in my pocket. I know this account is gonna get banned when the video goes up and I wasn't planning on playing more anyway. When I was farming I was selling these wheat items which are pretty much just bought by high level players that want to make end game farming items. So I'm gonna sprinkle that rich player money all over the new players and give them a little boost. Yeah I kind of accidentally deleted all of the clips of me giving my items away. So I'll enjoy this 1080p stream in the background. Long story short I just auctioned everything off for very cheap. I bought a bunch of enchanted cookies and gave them away. I gave some people cash. It was usually lower level players. Also I gave some tree capitators to the people in the park that were mining wood with low level axes. The thing about skyblock is that you don't sit in one area for hundreds of hours doing the same repetitive task. Usually you run around all over the place doing all sorts of different things. So overall I wouldn't say I had the most fun doing this out of any script. I would say RuneScape or also were much more fun to do this in, but it was alright I enjoyed working on the fishing script. If you want to learn how to program I have a tutorial here and if you want to check out Warp I would definitely recommend it because they have a really good deal going on and it's a really cool app.